Today, we're looking at a docking station from Tobin Wood. It supports up to three to four external monitors, depending on what OS you're using, has plenty of USB-A, USB-C ports, has SD card readers, and it has an Ethernet port. In this video, I'm going to tell you whether it's all that it claims to be and whether I think it's any good. Let's get into it. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. A lot of people these days work in multiple locations. I go into the office a few days a week. The rest of the time, I'm at home. In both locations, I have a docking station where I can just plug in my computer right in and I'm ready to go. Today, we're looking at this docking station from Tobin One. Full disclosure, Tobin One did reach out to me and asked me if I would like to review this product. Although they did offer this product to me for free, they're not seeing this video before it goes up. All my opinions are my own. As always, feel free to skip to any part of this video using the timestamps here or the timestamps listed below. As one commenter said in one of my last keyboard videos, 25% of this video was useless. Just get to the point and tell me why I want this keyboard. Wait, 75% of that video was useful? Hmm. Let me take you through all the ports and features of this docking station. First, let's talk about the, all the ports that are used for display. This has a total of six ports for display. You have four HDMI ports and two display ports. You can see that they're grouped into three different display groups because each of the groups, you can only use one of the ports. So for example, display one and display two group, you can only use either display port and HDMI port, but not both at the same time. You can mix and match if it's display port or HDMI, as long as they are in different groups. Now with display three, there are two HDMI ports. On Windows, you can actually use both of these HDMI ports at the same time. But on Mac OS, you can only use one of them. So on Windows, this is actually a quad monitor dock. And on Mac OS, it's a triple monitor dock. Now, in order for you to use Display 1 and Display 2, you need to download the Display Link drivers. Now, I've talked about Display Link in one of my past videos. But essentially, Display Link is the technology that allows you to run displays through USB or uh, Wi-Fi. In the past, older computers did not do well with this technology. There was just a lot of lack. But with modern chips and modern computers, DisplayLink has really come along, especially with Apple Silicon. So I'm going to do a quick demo of connecting three external monitors to my M1 MacBook Air using the Tubin One docking station. So first, I'm going to hook up my Asus monitor here, and then I'm going to connect these two portable monitors. All of these are going to be connecting via HDMI. So first, let me plug in the external monitor here, my ASUS monitor, and this should pop up as a monitor. So now I have a dual monitor system with my M1 MacBook Air. So really just one external monitor. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in one of the portable monitors, and we're gonna see that it doesn't do anything because I don't have the Display Leak Manager software uh, running right now. So remember, group one and two use Display Leak and I plugged in this monitor to display group three. So if I fire up Display Link Manager, we should see this monitor pop up right away now. Actually, I accidentally plugged in this one over here, which is fine. And then now I'm going to plug in this one here. And this one should pop up now as well. So now I have three external monitors and I really have a quadruple monitor set up here. And remember on Windows, you can get another uh, HDMI monitor, giving you a total of five monitors if you wanted to with your laptop included. There are a few USB ports in the front. First, you have three USB-A ports. Two of them are actually USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, which supports up to 10 gigabits a second. Then you have one USB 2.0 port, which is meant to be used for wireless devices like a mouse or keyboard dongle. There is also one on the back as well. Then you have two USB-C ports. These are actually only USB 3.0 ports, which only support up to five gigabits of transfer speed. This is where it gets a little confusing for people. You would think that the USB-C port is a more modern port, but they're only using a slower protocol on this dock. Here's a quick test I did measuring the speed of these ports. So for this test, I'm using the, my Samsung T7, the 500 gigabyte version. And here I have it plugged into the computer directly. So we can see what the potential speed of this drive is as far as my system is concerned. And I'm getting about 650 megabits 
of write speed and 700 megabits of read speed. Now I have the Samsung plugged into the USB-C port, which is a USB 3.0 port with five gigabits of transfer speed max. And we're getting about 342 on the write speed and 310 on the read speed, interestingly left. But it is slower when you have to go through a hub. So now let's try it on the USB-A port. Now we have the T7 attached to the USB-A port. It is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port with a max speed of 10 gigabits a second. And we are getting faster throughput speeds. We have a write speed of 582 megabits a second and a read speed for, with about 560 megabits a second. So we are getting better throughput with the USB-A port. Below the USB-C ports, you have the SD and micro SD card reader, which are only UHS-1 rated. So it has a slower speed as far as reading and writing, and you may or may not be able to read higher end cards. Moving our way back up, you have the 3.5 audio jack, which supports both input and output. Then we have an LED indicator light above that. Lastly on the front, we have a power button. I don't like the fact that it does have a power button on a docking station like this. If I'm relying on this to power my monitors, hard drive, peripherals, and even my network connection, I don't like the fact that it can all go away with the press of a button. Now, partly I'm afraid of accidentally pressing it. It is a firm button, but I could see a scenario where you have the docking station a little bit below and I'm gonna pull out a thumb drive or a USB peripheral and I accidentally press the button. To finish out the ports, we do have the other USB-A 2.0 port that I mentioned before. We have a gigabit ethernet port. The USB-C port is the host port which connects to your computer. The dock can provide up to 100 watts of power to your laptop. The power comes in from the DC port. Speaking of power, here's how big the power adapter brick is. Really, I think the gold standard of these types of docks is made by CalDigit, in particular the TS3 Plus and the TS4. How does this Tobin one compare to the CalDigit? Well, they're pretty different products and it all depends on your needs. The CalDigit docks, the TS3 Plus and the TS4 are Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 docks. They have more USB ports or more ports in general, and all the ports pretty much have more throughput. If we compare the prices though, the TS4 is considerably more expensive than all of them. So it's better that we compare this Tobin one to the TS3. As the time of this recording, you can get both of these after coupon for a little over $200. Actually, the TS3 Plus is about $199 after coupon. So which one would I recommend? Well, it all depends on your needs. If you need higher data transfer speeds and you have a bunch of Thunderbolt accessories, then definitely go with the CalDigit. The Tobin one on the Amazon listing says that it's for Thunderbolt 4 and 3. Let's be clear, this is not a Thunderbolt dock. What they really mean is that if you plug it into a Thunderbolt 4 or 3 or even a USB 4 port, it's going to work because those ports or protocols are backwards compatible. So then why would you get the Tobin one over the CalDigit? The one biggest feature it has is display link compatibility. As well as the CalDigit performs, it can't get over the limitation of an M-series chip, which it can only support one external display. Now, if you want to get more than one external display, you're going to have to go to a Pro Series chip, or you're going to have to get the M3 MacBook Air that can support two external displays with the lid closed. But using this dock, you get all the ports that you need, and you can support up to three external displays if you're on Mac OS. And if you're on Windows, you can support up to four displays because of the display link drivers. Yes, the ports are a little bit slower, but in real world use, I don't think it's gonna slow you down at all. Overall, I think this is a good product and will meet the need of most people. If you're one that needs multiple monitors and needs a few more ports, you could buy two separate products or you can combine them all into one product like this. Thanks again to Tobin One for sending this dock out to me. I do have other docks to review, and eventually I will do a head-to-head -head battle of all the docks and hubs that I have. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, see ya.